Okay, so what is the internet? The internet is a network of networks, okay? And there are a couple of ways to describe it. We'll start with a nuts and bolts description. So the internet is a computer network interconnecting hundreds of millions of devices throughout the world. And here are some pieces of the internet. Um, you have mobile networks, uh, the mobile network that con connects to the national or global ISP, uh, internet service provider. Then you have local or regional ISP. And then your home network connects to that. So uh, here you have things like uh, base station, the modem, uh, routers, and down here you have servers. And then this is a link layer switch. And yeah, here's an enterprise network for businesses to connect to the local ISP. Now there's about. Um, one million end systems attached to the internet and about two billion internet users so it's very huge and the end systems are just these things right here so phones laptops computers pcs um, anything that connects to the internet so they can be called end systems or hosts and they're called that because they sit at the edge of the internet so uh, they can host applications sometimes like a web browser web server so it's sort of an important distinction to make is that the internet and the web are actually different. And uh, these hosts can be further divided into clients, um, like desktop, mobile, mobile PC, smartphones, and servers, which are more powerful machines that store and distribute web pages, uh, stream video, relay email, and so on. So most of the servers from which uh, we get search results and email and things like that reside in large data centers like places like Google just have thousands of um, servers in their data centers so all these end systems are connected together by a network of communication links and packet switches and you don't need to know a lot about these right now but just that um, there there are a lot of different kinds um, they're made up of different physical things including coaxial cables copper wire optical fiber and radio spectrum and uh, different links can transmit data at different rates with a transmission rate of a link measured in bits per second so when one end system has data to send to another the sending end system uh, segments the data and adds header bytes to each segment so the resulting packages of information uh, known as packets are sent through the network to the destination end system where they're reassembled into the original data and so a packet switch takes a packet arriving on one of its in incoming communication links and then forwards that packet to one of its outgoing links. Uh, so here's an example of what that looks like. Packet switch networks, um, which they transport packets. They're similar to like roads and highways and intersections. So here's somebody using a computer and um, there are many ways for a single uh, communication a single packet to be routed to a destination so maybe your email is going to here as a final destination but then um, there's no like fixed path or something packets are just routed uh, in a way that's efficient for it to be broken up and then reassembled when it comes back to here so yeah and uh, and systems access the internet through ISPs, internet service providers. So uh, there's residential ISPs like local cable or telephone companies, um, corporate ISPs, universities, and ones that provide Wi-Fi like in Starbucks or something. Uh, so each ISP is in itself a network of packet switches and communication links. And ISPs provide a variety of types of network access to the end systems. Uh, that includes residential broadband, um, local area network access, and wireless access, or dial-up, which nobody really uses these days. Um, so ISPs uh, also provide internet, con internet access to content providers connecting websites directly to the internet. So the internet is all about connecting end systems to each other so that the ISPs uh, that provide access to end systems must also be con interconnected. These uh, lower tier ISPs are interconnected through national and international upper tier ISPs. 
such as uh, AT&T and Sprint and NTT. Um, so this just consists of high-speed routers and high-speed fiber optic links. So each ISP network, um, whether upper tier or lower tier, is managed independently, uh, runs the IP protocol, and conforms to certain naming and address conventions. So protocols, um, they control the sending and receiving of information within the internet. Okay, so uh, some examples are TCP transmission control protocol and, I and uh, IP internet protocol. And IP specifies the format of the packets that are sent and received um, among routers and end systems. So it's, it's very important to have these protocols because everybody has to agree like um, on what each protocol does so that they can create systems and products that interoperate and that's why it's important to have standards so um, let's see uh, the internet standards are developed by the internet engineering task force IETF and um, they are called requests the the ITF standards documents are called requests for comments R RFCs so they started out as a general request for comments to resolve the network and protocol design problems and uh, it can be very technical, but they define protocols for the internet and the web, which are very important. Okay, so the next video will describe the services description of the internet.